Hello, and my name is Lowell Vanderpool, and this channel is dedicated to IT professionals, IT students, and anyone who's interested in technical subjects. Troubleshooting computers, desktops, laptops, tablets, or Chromebooks, or any of that kind of devices is really complicated. It's not easy to do this. It comes by learning and practicing and doing troubleshooting. It's great to watch a YouTube video, but a YouTube video is not going to make you a troubleshooter. A great troubleshooter troubleshooter is one who troubleshoots constantly every time they get a chance. So if you're looking for some quick lesson that's going to make you a great troubleshooter, my videos are definitely not going to do it. But if you'll take what is being taught and you apply it and you troubleshoot every problem you can, and don't worry about failures. I, I've learned more from failures than I've ever learned from successes. So get out there, troubleshoot, make big mistakes, fix them, learn from them, and move on. And if you keep doing that, you'll become a very good troubleshooter. I'm going to walk you through when to use hard drive diagnostics in your troubleshooting process. And I think it'll give you some good ideas at, at so that you're not going down a rabbit trail here or rabbit trail here and wasting a lot of time. So what am I going to cover in this presentation? One, troubleshooting your PC, laptop, bootable drive. Many times when you're having PC, laptop, issues, check your hard drive first. It takes five minutes to boot to a, a, a bootable, bootable USB flash drive and check that hard disk. Why waste two hours only to find it was a hard drive when you should have done that in the very beginning? We're going to look at external hard drives that the operating system can't see. You plug them in and it says, I don't see a hard drive. We're going to look at flash drives where your data is missing. We're going to look at how to divide and conquer your problems. And we're going to learn some effective troubleshooting. So my operating system will not boot. Getting weird messages on your screen, black screens with flashing cursors, PC is unstable. Those are all very, very frustrating for especially non-technical users, but for IT pros, it can be really difficult as to where to begin. Is your first question you want to ask, is your hard drive a spindle drive or a solid state drive? Solid state drives have a tendency to be more stable, so I probably wouldn't test right away a, a solid state drive, whereas a spindle drive it's going to be one of my first tests in a scenario that I just mentioned. If you've got a Windows boot issue and it's a spindle drive and you test it and it's fine, then let me show you the next videos you want to go to. If it's a solid state disk, then it's probably not the solid state hard drive. You probably want to come to my channel, come down here to a number of videos that I did on advanced troubleshooting for Windows 10 boot problems, Windows 10 startup settings, advanced troubleshooting, how to boot Windows 10 into startup up settings. Those are some great videos that will help you get in and start troubleshooting all of the other issues unrelated to hard drive problems. So if you tested the hard drive, you've done some of the things that I've talked about. Troubleshooting is not simple. You could have, if you're still having boot issues and the hard drive is good, you could have Windows registry corruption. You can have critical operating system files gone or overwritten, missing boot files. You can even have hardware failure. You can have motherboard chipsets that are dying or dead. All kinds of things can cause the PC not to boot besides the hard drive. One of my favorite to when I know the hard drive is good, uh, but I'm still not sure what's causing the operating system a problem. I boot to a Linux live CD and I run that live CD. If that live CD will run and work and function properly, then I know my laptop hardware, my desktop hardware is fine. Then I'm going to focus my time on troubleshooting the operating system. Two good things that I've already mentioned hard drive diagnostics, which I'm going to show you more in this video. But if you're concerned as to whether hardware failure, boot to a Linux live CD and use Ubuntu or Mint Linux or whatever. Just boot it up and see, does everything seem to work okay with a live version of Linux? If it does, 
your hardware probably is okay. If I have a PC that won't boot or it's got all kinds of errors during the boot process before, and I know it's a spindle drive, before I spend a lot of time wasting trying to troubleshoot what's wrong with the operating system, I want to know, is the hard drive good? I'm going to use Seagate C Tools, a USB bootable tool. I can boot it up and in five minutes I can determine is this good or bad and then I can focus on what my next appropriate step is. I'm going to walk you through how to download it, create the bootable flash drive. It works with all makes and brands. It works with solid state hard drive. So if you're still considering it might be a solid state hard drive, this will test your solid state hard drive. It's a couple things to remember. It needs a USB flash drive the size of, of at least 256 megabytes, but no larger than 32 gigabytes. So those one terabyte flash drives you have, forget those. And it needs to be formatted in FAT32. But the tool, the utility that you'll download actually will take care of that. It will just prompt you and warn you that you're going to format. It's going to lose all the drive, all the data on the drive. You can go to Google and just simply type in Seagate C Tools, and it should take you to this page. You're got, we're going to download the C Tools bootable utility and you can see it downloading you're going to extract it into a drive and you can see it here there is a text file it's probably good to look at the text file there are certain laptops desktops that have certain mice certain a hardware that it doesn't work with just be aware of that once you double click the utility it's going to launch and it'll ask you what language it will launch a Windows utility that's going to create a Linux boot disk. You have to do the EULA. I've selected the drive here in the window, what USB flash drive I want to use. And in this case, I've got a flash drive that already has a Seagate C tools on it, but I'm just going to blow it away to, for this demonstration. You can see it's a 15 gig flash drive. Remember, over 32, it doesn't like, this utility doesn't like over 32 gigs. So we're back to our menu. This simply says you're going to lose all the contents in the flash drive and we would say yes and go ahead and create and it begins to build flash drive with a Linux boot distro it begins to copy the utilities to the USB flash drive and really is a great little tool you can keep it in your toolbox use this anytime you feel like you need to test a hard drive especially with non bootable PCs and laptops this is where this really becomes a super tool we're gonna spare you all this time and speed this up with video editing This takes about four minutes to create this USB drive. Okay, you're now complete. And you now have, you can remove the flash drive from the computer, take it over to the non-booting PC or laptop, and go ahead and boot it and begin to run the test on the flash drive. Now, Seagate C Tools does have a number of other utilities. Number one, they have a C C C Tools SSD GUI. That's very nice. We'll look at it, but it has to be installed. There's also a C Seagate C Tools SSD command line, and we'll look at that. The other problem is it has to be installed. There's also a C Tool for Windows, which we have to use when we start troubleshooting external hard drives. I don't like installable tools, especially when I'm troubleshooting. Portable tools are utilities that do not require installation or modification of your registry. So I'm a big proponent of portable apps or portable utilities or portable tools. I don't like to install software on a machine that I'm troubleshooting unless I have no other option, such as working on an external hard drive. Let's go ahead and boot up the USB tools and it gives you a default timer until it boots. Continues the boot process in Linux. We'll spare you how long this takes with some video editing magic. You'll choose the language and say OK. You'll have to scroll this entire dialog box to the very bottom before you can go and say accept. And now you have your Seagate C tools, tools itself. Remember, you have to check the drive before you can initiate a tool or utility. So we're going to do our smart check. Notice it happens very fast. So remember, you always have to check a drive, then select a test. The short generic test is a very good test as far as a go, no test. If it passes this test, it's probably good. If you're, you know, there probably is a driver too that need the longer test, but it takes quite a while. And you're pretty much done. Very fast because you're in a very small operating system, so things go quickly. 
If you go to advanced features, it will warn you that you could lose data, so be careful. You may want to look at the PDF before you go down this road. Again, always select the drive before running the test. And here we're going to select the long generic test and I'm going to abort it, but get you, get you started. And you can see it, it will take a while. This is a good test if you have time and you want to really thoroughly test the drive. But the gener generic short test is usually fine. I went ahead and aborted the test and exit the tool. It doesn't take very long to test a hard drive. That's why I say this is a good test. So what is SMART? SMART is statistical analysis on a hard drive that's baked into the firmware. It analyzes in this Wikipedia chart. It shows you the data that it collects and compares against the manufacturer's recommended statistics about all kinds of performance metrics on that hard drive. The ones the the rows that are highlighted and have the warning indicator are especially ones or data that you want to pay attention to. So if you get a smart warning on any of these rows that are highlighted and have the warning indicator, Google, after about 100,000 consumer product hard drives, found that if one of these came on and said, smart said, this is out of tolerance or this, this statistical value is out of tolerance from the manufacturer, you have about a 39% failure rate on that hard drive. So you can see there's a lot of data collected and monitored. The ones that are highlighted, those are the ones you pre predominantly want to pay attention to. Most motherboards allow you to turn on smart monitoring. It's very wise to do that. It doesn't guarantee that you will catch a hard drive failure, but I have many times seen smart give me an indication and save me from losing all the data on the, the user's hard drive. So this is the menu, the GUI interface for C tool for Windows, and it's it's very similar to all of the other C tool diagnostic tools. Let's choose. First thing you have to do is choose a drive. I'm going to choose my NVMe M.2. I'm going to come up to basic test, and I can get drive information. I can do a short generic test or a long generic test. Depending on the type of hard drive, you get you may get more tests available or less tests available. Let's uncheck this NVMe and come down to just a spindle drive and you'll notice under the same option I have a lot more options to do like smart I'm gonna run the smart test and you can see there I ran the smart test and it passed different kinds of hard drives will allow different kinds of tests so don't be surprised especially NVMe M.2s they allow fewer tests to be run on them because most of the firmware on those drives do their own internal testing here's a solid state SATA drive right here at Kingston. I'm going to come up to test and I'm going to just do a short generic test and it will get started on this. And you can see it begins to tell you what type of diagnostic routine is running on that and the progress of that routine. The generic test is probably a basic test that will give you a go, no go as to whether the hard drive is good or bad. If SMART says it's good, but the generic test says it's not, I would probably trust the generic test. If SMART says it's bad, you probably, it's bad. So if SMART says it's good, but the generic test says it's bad, I would definitely replace the hard drive. Let's let this finish. And so now the generic test has passed. This is the way it works for spindle drives, solid state drives. You see that I have fewer tests available when I come up here to my NVMe hard drive. A lot fewer options. I can get drive information. Let me pull that over here. And you can see there it gives me a lot of information about the drive. So a lot of this is very helpful too. Just learning about your drive itself. Now you can also come up to the help and view log files and you can come up here and you can actually view all of the, the testing you did such as let me pop this up and I can see the various tests that I ran on this particular drive so you can view your log files as well. Remember, SMART is available almost on every motherboard platform, whether your server, desktop, 
laptop. I've rarely in the last five years went into the firmware of any device that did not have the ability to turn on smart. Turn it on. It's great. Use it. It doesn't, it isn't a guarantee, but it's a great tool. Let's wrap up CTools. It has a command line utility set. You can install it right from a command line. Make sure you download the PDF that walks you through all the utilities and commands and switches and arguments. CTools also has a GUI for SSD. So you can see the dashboard that I've got here in the graphics. They have basic test, diagnostic test of almost any drive. Drive information, status, temperature, which is very important. Monitor your drive temperature. Upgrade a firmware but only for SAS, SCSI, and fiber channel drives. Erasure, which I have found helpful many, many times with totally blown up drives. Encryption of data for disposal. Clone software for SSD and NVMe. Tunable capacity and performance. And they also show you the percentage of time left of life expectancy for selected SSDs. Take a look. If you haven't been using these tools, you need to download them, take a look at them, and learn them. For a tech, these are life. Very, very important. Both Western Digital and Seagate do not run some kind of special hard drive test. They actually run what is known as DST. DST is built into every hard drive's firmware, and the, this utility is basically allowing you to access it. DST is completely data safe. The amount of time it takes to run these tests on the long and short DST test can depend on the capacity and the speed of the drive. Some drives can take two to four hours. If you abort a DST, it does not harm the drive. But just keep in mind, if you abort it, you haven't th thoroughly tested the entire drive. So just keep that in mind. This is the interface for the GUI of the solid state hard drive testing. So you can do a lot of cool things with these utilities. The only drawback is they're installable. Seagate also has what's known as C-Chest utilities. These are all command line and they give you a lot of additional tools for SSDs. Let's take a look at Western Digital's lifeguard. You can go and just type in Western Digital lifeguard and it will take you to this location. And they have a installable diagnostics for Windows. If I have an external hard drive, a Western Digital external hard drive, I'm gonna use these tools. If I have a Seagate external hard drive, I'm gonna use these tools. Uh, so just use the appropriate tools. Can Western Digital work with a Seagate? Yes, it will. But I have a tendency to use the manufacturer tools for that particular drive family. So I've installed it. I'm going to go ahead and run lifeguard. Say yes. Check the yes I ex accept the license agreement. Go next and it will start to run the detection tool. This takes a while. If you're using trying to use your computer at the same time you're running these diagnostics it does slow these diagnostics down. So it's best to just not run any software just run the diagnostics. All right here's my window for lifeguard for Western Digital. It's a little bit different, but notice it's done the smart test automatically for most of the drives. It shows me the drive model, serial number, capacity. Down here, it gives me the drive letter, the file system. Uh, very nice. So if I want to run a test, I'll go ahead and choose this one, this 500 gig. And I come up here and I just click this and I'm going to go ahead and run the quick test. So we'll say yes. And it just begins to run DST on that drive. And I'll use some video magic to shorten this down. Okay, we're successful. We're going to close. Now, if I want to see, if I want to view the results of the test, I can just click, double click that, and I can see a basic summary of what took place. I want to close this out. I can highlight this drive, highlight that drive, and then here I can view the smart data for that drive. And this is all my self-monitoring analysis and reporting metrics for that drive. And you really good for testing. The disadvantage is it, you have to install it. It's good for testing external hard drives. I like these tools for externals or flash drives. Check them out. This is a good set of tools in your toolbox. 
NerfSoft is a website hosted by a developer, programmer, IT professional, and he creates a lot of great utilities. If you've never been to this site, you need to come here, take a look. One thing I love about these tools is they are portable. In other words, they don't install, they don't edit, edit your registry. One of the tools that I like to use when I'm troubleshooting with a USB flash drives that you plug in that don't show up or don't work right is I like this USB device view. Let's take a look at it. Now, I I've downloaded and extracted it and I'm going to go ahead and just I can run as an administrator or I can just run it with normal credentials. You can see it's got a very very incredibly interesting interface. Now the information you see about all your USB devices, 90% of this is coming directly out of your registry. Everything that's green in this list is things that are plugged in and working right now. The items that have the green dot besides that are items that you can pull out and plug in. In other words, you can safely remove them and plug them in. They're plug and play. The items that here that are green that have red dot by them, you need to remove safely with the USB safely remove hardware. Don't just pull the plug. And because these are hard drives plugged into a toaster, that is true. So it's giving you some heads up on some items that you want to be very careful about just pulling the USB plug out. Now this tool is just fantastic. You can right mouse click on anything and you can see you can uninstall selected devices. So if I'm in a situation where a user is plugging in a flash drive and it doesn't work, it worked yesterday but today it doesn't, I may go launch this tool, go find that device and remove it. I'll just come down here to uninstall selected devices and uninstall and this will remove the registry edits and the driver from the Windows System 32 drivers folder. It'll just kind of clean house and then let that individual plug it back in and see if the driver is installed, the registry is re-edited, and everything is happy and good. So that's one way that you can do. You can disable devices. You can enable devices. You can open up the registry right where that USB device is in the registry. So this is pretty, pretty cool stuff. Now you notice I've got a lot of gray items. These are USB devices that I've plugged in, and you can look at the date column or create a date column, and you can see when they were plugged in. And a lot of times it's okay, especially if you know you only plugged it in one time, to go ahead and uninstall these, get them out of the registry, get those drivers out of your System32 drivers folder. Just kind of clean house. This is not a utility you use every day, but when I run into USB flash drive issues, this is a nice little tool to get started with. Before I waste a lot of time with a flash drive, I typically will deal with the user and say, it worked yesterday, yes, and then today it doesn't. I'll go in and kind of clean house on that USB device, drivers, registry at, plug it in afresh, and many, many times I'm back to a working flash drive. Now, if you're trying to get data off or trying to do data recovery, there are all kinds of tools out there that will, will attempt to tell you, yes, they can recover their data, but you've got to pay for this or buy this. My tool that I've used years and years, works every time, is Photorec. Photorec is just a great tool for recovering data off flash drives, external hard drives, SATA drives, any kind of drive. So if you're doing data recovery, check out Photorec.